Well, good morning, Emerald Hill Skies. I say good morning because it is just after 4 a.m. in the morning here on the outskirts of Louisville, Kentucky. We are so happy you're here. Um, I see in the stream that Ken, you are already here. And uh, Ryan, welcome to you. Uh, looks like, Ken, you're doing some kind of flight training, some kind of pilot training. Uh, 737 simulator training with new students. So you must like teach, you must teach uh, aviation or something. Uh, well, uh, for some reason, this is interesting, <clears throat> the, um, the, sim the little program we use to stream, which has nothing to do with astronomy, uh, OBS had forgotten the stream key. So that was evidently the, um, the issue that was going on this morning with the stream. So I'm going to change this title to Welcome to Emerald Hill Skies. Wow, 35 years flight. That's great, Ken. So you've been teaching flying for 35, or at least flying for 35 years. That's outrageous. <clears throat> well, we sure don't want to keep you from your students, but it sure is good to have you here. Let's see, the next thing we have to work on, <clears throat> uh, it's a minor thing, isn't it? Trying to get the scope cam to show up. It seems like there's some kind of a, an issue every few seconds. Well, now maybe, maybe our fiber optic relay to the observatory is up and running now. That would be great if it were. Let's see, the scope cam is what we need next. Um, So we're going to configure that. Ah, there we go. I'm going to dial that up a bit. Still not able to see that, are we? Let's turn that brightness up some. Try turning the gain up. There we go. So that at least lets us see the scope. And as you can see, that ugly um, stuff up there in the sky, those are all dense clouds. I mean, it's not just a few passing high-level clouds. They are ugly, dense. Some kind of soup. Okay, so that gets us our um, scope cam. And there's our sky cam. Let's um, let's go have a look at that a little more closely. Can't really tell if that's breaking up or not. I don't know if you guys can. Try darkening that so we can get a better picture of those clouds. You know, this is looking less cloudy over here, isn't it? Could it be that this cloud bank, cloud bank is sliding away? But what's underneath here? Some other, other kind of clouds at a different height? So that's not good. Uh, this is a snapshot of the of the telescope out in the observatory. It's a Rasa 11-inch on a PureTech 2 
adjustable height pier and down there at the bottom you can see this little rack it's got all the power distribution equipment in it uh, that sends the signal to where I am on the inside here about 200 feet from the observatory here's the camera out on the front end of that telescope you can see perhaps it's a ZWO ASI 2600 MC Pro and the observatory is a PureTech Telestation 2 with a roll-off roof and we've got that roof rolled off this morning and the scope is raised. Flatwater 5, good to have you. Did you get up early for this Flatwater 5? I think you're in, I forget where you are in Australia. Um, can't remember. <laughs> yeah. Flatwater 5 says, I'm sure Stu and Ray will be along shortly. <laughs> anyway, um, the sad part is this pea soup please work oh thank goodness please work oh thank goodness you know this wasn't working before the screen and I was afraid that we weren't going to see them out and thank you lord for whatever reason it appears to have Started okay now. So next we're going to bring up Stellarium. <clears throat> we upgraded Stellarium yesterday to version 23.1. I guess now they've gone to a numbering scheme in which they'll put the last two digits of the year. And this is the 0.1 increment of 2023. So in the process, all of the um, settings were gone. I don't know why um, this thing crashed as it started a new... Oh, Stu, you're there. Coffee time, he says. And then he said, BBS. I don't know what that means. B... Be back soon. I bet that's what that is. Be back soon. I'm just taking a wild guess. BBS. Be back soon. Uh, Flatwater5 says, good to see you. Dallas. Wow, that's awesome. You got Aurora Borealis. I wish we could stream what you're seeing. Yeah, Flatwater5 interprets be back soon for us. So anyway, there's um, Stellarium. I... I think it seems to be working okay. And there's the little telescope applet that we needed, so that's working okay. Now let's see if we can um, this is the view through the telescope right now. <laughs> It's so ugly, isn't it? It's a three-second exposure at 400 gain of um, these clouds. I'm trying to see if this light pollution dome segment here is any better. The clouds are at least moving. You can see there. Let's bring up the uh, clear sky cloud app. Let's see. Here we are. Sure enough, 6 a.m. now they're saying it's going to be clear. You know, this whole section here 
this little section here between, see this green patch right here between 6 a.m. and 10 a.m. Over the last four days, that section had been right here between 3 a.m. and 7 a.m. So we took a guess that if we started at 4, Aurora Borealis shining down in Dallas. It must be a song or something. Dr. Teeth and the Electric Mayhem. Dr. Teeth and the Electric Mayhem, Aurora it must be, uh, can you picture that? That's some kind of a song, isn't it? Dr. Teeth and the Electric Mayhem. I'm not going to be able to uh, play it online because of the copyright Uh, Dr. Teeth and the Electric Mayhem. Can you picture that? The song is Can You Picture That? Yeah, I'm not going to be able to play it because of the copyright problems, but I, I at least now can see there is a song <laughs> by that Flatwater Five. Thanks. <laughs> you're, you're wild. Um, Ricky, good to have you on. Ricky, I hope you didn't get up special for this because, boy, we are socked in with clouds. Anyway, I was saying that this entire green section here had been here between 4 a.m. and 7 a.m., or 3 a.m. and 7 a.m., so I thought, well, if I started at 4 a.m. it would allow an hour of slack time in case it took an extra hour for those clouds to scoot out. Little did I know it would actually be um, four hours off, sadly. Ricky says, just don't play Baby Shark. Can substitute weird. <laughs> Um, so, I tell you what, it looks like that's, let's go to uh, emeraldhillskies.com and let's look under resources and let's have a look at our sheet here for the Messier Marathon, there's that. Secret Dark, Hidden Treasure, Caldwell List. Here we go, Herschel List. Now this says we have 75 out of 400 objects left to go, but let's bring up our observing software, which is Deep Sky Planner here. And uh, let's see. How about if we? I can never remember how to export these. Let's take, uh, let's ignore the horizon for a minute and just look at observed and run this. Now, I can, like I said, I can never quite remember how to export these. Is it save as? No, it's not save as. Is it export, export plan custom? No, it's not that. Is it... Um, It's not export plan to app. 
every time I see this, I'm just amazed at how simple it is when I finally find it. To export this to CSV, I don't want to print it. Do I? No. Save as. That doesn't let you export it. Here we go. Save report to CSV format. And let's save this as H four hundred remaining. Let's just do that. And it's April 2nd, too, so it wouldn't have been an April Fool's joke because, well, I guess it could have been, couldn't it? Because so it's under export. <laughs> Stu thought maybe this is an April Fool's joke. All right, so now let's go to that file folder, which is uh, Documents, Deep Sky Planner, Export, and open up that CSV. Now, oh look, it's just showing the ones we haven't observed. It's the wrong export, isn't it? We have to ignore observed how silly of me and try that one more time save report to CSV overwrite that close this Ken good luck with your uh, training for those 737 pilots You're awesome to, to check that out later. Ricky, I just got back home. I was actually storm chasing the last couple of days. So you must work with the utilities, Ricky. Some kind of a lineman for the county. All right, now let's open this up again. Okay, so we don't need altitude or Common or best. The rest, let's see. Let's sort this in NGC order. Uh, data. Sort, sort by object user. Okay. Um, Now let's go to um, that sheet, which is um, Herschel 400. This is in different order, isn't it? It's an order of object user observed hmm. object user observed. This 
So let's add an add a column here. Put the observed column there. Object user observed, object type, constellation, size, magnitude. Now look, all these trues, let's do a, um, a search wherever we find, let's just search within that column. Wherever we find the word true, let's replace it with one. Replace all. And wherever we find the word false, let's replace it with nothing. Okay, now let's grab all of this again. what? Delete cells? Or could just delete rows? And then Paste that in. Now, I wonder if it's more efficient if we tell it to delete these rows. Delete rows 405, there we go. Okay, now this says now 75. So let's save this if it's not already. There isn't even a prompt to save within Google Sheets, is there? All right, so let's close this now. That's automatically saved then, huh? It's a little bit unsettling. Oh, okay, it's updated. Five out of five, always have a song referencing the stars. Ricky, just don't play Baby Shark uh, I just got back home. Ricky, oh no, hi, I make knives, but I have family in Tennessee, Missouri, Apple, Alabama, so I visited up there and made my way back home and timed my southern path as the cells passed. Wow, you were kind of on a, sounds like a bad movie where you were driving in between the tornadoes. Sounds like a Tom Cruise uh, movie or something. So now we're we're showing no, we're not. It says you have to observe 75. Let's refresh this. What is going on here? I guess I closed that, didn't I? Rats. Let's open that back up. Show 400. Hmm. Oh, look, that's not an active formula. So we need to say equals sum, let's see, equals 400. 
minus the sum of all of this. Forty-eight left to go. It's <laughs> pretty cool, huh? Only forty-eight. Okay, now let's close that, force it to update, and then refresh this. Yeah. So you see we got about 48 objects yet to go, supposedly. And then um, this is the real-time view of that. So let's go back and say observe no local horizon model if available, localize now, and run that. So we have 43 of those 48 objects available right now if we could see the sky. So let's go back to a smaller screen here. And let's go back and take a look at the sky. Wow, it's just ugly, huh? Stu says there's some amazing footage from some of those crazy storm chasers recently. Tom Cruise types. P. Lark, late night hunting. Wow, you were up late. This is seriously hunting. You must... Just like... Uh, what are you hunting? P. Lark, like vampires or something? This is seriously late night. Anyway... That's ugly, isn't it? I don't know. Um, let's go back to our clear outside and refresh that. Oh, look. Now it says, now it says it would have been clear from 2 until 3. Yeah, right. Thanks a lot. <laughs> so it's saying it's going to be cloudy all the way through. Well, rats, I'm going to change the cover screen of this and maybe uh, make it something about storm chasers. I don't know if that footage is copyrighted or not, but storm chasers dual tornadoes storm chaser, chaser Vince Wattle Now see, that's probably not copyrighted right? Still, I don't want to risk that, because what if it is copyrighted? So anyway, I guess things could be worse, right? We could, we could actually be having this kind of weather here. Intense close-range intercept of violent EF4 tornado Crazy footage from further north than where I went, Ricky says. Well, either way, um, this, unfortunately, is the view that we have. And now the weather is saying that 
we're gonna stay socked in like this. So I guess, guys, we're gonna have to call it, uh, but we did overcome the cabling issues we had, so that was a, a good exercise in astronomy. We uh, did transfer in the um, update at Emerald Hill Skies so we can see where we stand. By the way, you see on the Messier Marathon, we were able to get 109 out of 110 deep space objects. We've turned that in at SEDS. And let's see, the 2023 Messier Marathon. They do not have that updated yet. These are still scheduled. So, you know, it takes uh, these, con these volunteers a while. Hartmut and Christine. Thank you so very much, Hartmut and Christine. It takes them a while to update this, but we've turned that in to the SEDS people so that can be updated. Um, and then with the Secret Dark, We've still got to go 63 out of those 109. With the um, hidden treasures, we still have to do 57 out of those 109. Caldwell list, we have to do 59 out of these 114. But take a look at this. The Herschel list of 400 objects, we only have 48 out of 402 to go. So now you can see actively what are the remaining objects that we have to do because they're the ones that don't have the number one in them. So there you go. I'm so sorry it was clouded in. Uh, Stu says, Let's see, uh, Stu says, that's the one I saw, almost drove into it. Ricky, I'm glad you didn't get a hit. No, that fell in the video, crazy. Flower to five, doggone, oh well, what can you do? Stu, you can go watch Electrum AM. Can you picture that slapping song, Ricky? Got some footage in Southern Georgia this afternoon of one forming. It was around Tai Tai in Ray City. Stu, or Mr. Baseman with Scooter, even better. <laughs> you guys are wild. <laughs> All right, well, I don't know if it's possible that we spent around 40, 45 minutes here, just uh, kind of stalling until we wish that these uh, clouds would roll away, but they're not gonna. So, unfortunately, this is uh, what we have this morning, guys. Thanks for being here. I hope, Stu, that's nice of you to say thanks for trying. Thank you for being here. I don't know if it's worth going back to sleep or not now, but at least I'll go out and I'll do something, work on the observatory or something. But thank you guys for being here. I'll change the title slide so we don't get accused of false advertising. And we'll look forward to seeing you guys in the next one. Next clear night, we'll be here. So uh, thank you guys. God bless. Don't forget to go to emeraldhillskies.com. Check that out. You can always go over to um, Patreon. What is that called? Emerald Hill Skies Patreon. And check out uh, the chance of being a patron there. Uh, that helps keep us going here because we see your camaraderie and that uh, lets us give to others. We just sent a $310, I think it was, $310 check over to Southern Turkey to give those folks a chance to get some soup and some blankets. Um, so when you pitch in, even at the actual um, YouTube channel, which is uh, Emerald Hill Skies, Emerald Hill Skies there, you can see um, in the store all the different merchandise you can try out. Even when you buy merchandise, a tote bag or a sticker or a mug or a hoodie, a t-shirt. You can click on any of these little uh, from Spread Shop and you can see lots of other uh, 
there is an Australian shop, by the way. You can do hoodies, whatever you want. And when you buy that stuff, it also helps refugees and folks that are going through hurt around the world. Thank you for doing that. And thanks to God for making the universe like you've made it with all these uh, amazing storms and natural events. I'll have to go watch that video as soon as this is over. Um, Flowerwater 5, we enjoy cruising the cosmos with you. I'll go watch that video. Wow, Flowerwater 5, may you light your way and clear your path. Flowerwater 5, you need to go get some Emerald Hill Skies merch. <laughs> if you like content that's cloudy like this, I hope you'll subscribe. <laughs> Click the thumbs up and uh, the notification bell. Crush that bell so that you'll get notified when we go online with streams just like this one. God bless you guys. Have a great evening or morning as it is. Stu, for you evening there in Tauranga, New Zealand. Take care. God bless and good night.